God has boundaries and um, he has boundaries for each one of us that we need to be operating within. We also need and have boundaries in order to protect us, in order to grow us, in order to keep us from harm's way. Um, I want to share this scripture. We're going to dive into it a little bit, and I'm going to use some definitions of some of these words to illustrate my point. But the scripture we're going to dive into today is found in Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 11. We're going to go into the book of Psalm to really talk about boundaries. So it says, the law of the Lord is perfect. Yeah, that's good news. Reviving the soul. It says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Tonight, I want to talk about the fact that we need to create healthy boundaries in our lives to not only protect our space, but to protect our mental health, to protect our creativity, to protect our energy, and to protect our output. God has boundaries that he not only created, and we see example of territorial boundaries that he, uh, he marked out the area in which the Israelites were to live, and those boundaries were uh, for their protection, and also within those boundaries was provision. We understand that God is a God of order. God is a God of detail. And in the same way that God uses boundaries, we too are to establish boundaries in our own lives. I'm going to go down the line of some of the things that were mentioned in this scripture. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. I did some defining. So I want to define what exactly a boundary is. And I think my heart posture, let me kind of share where that's coming from. I believe that a lot of us have conflict, we have issues, we find ourselves exhausted, we find ourselves overused, walked on, we might find ourselves in positions that come because we have not established sound boundaries in our lives. We might know them in our mind, we might have them set in our heart, but we have not had them established. So a boundary is a line that marks the limits of an area. So God, like I said, creates boundaries for usually protection, provision, and a number of other things. And in the same way, we need to be drawing lines in our lives that mark the limits of where people are allowed and what we're allowed and where we're supposed to go. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. A law is just that. It's a system of rules that regulates actions and is enforced with penalties. So we understand that there are rules that we call the law that we must adhere to. If we uh, transverse, if, or if we, if we what, is it, what is the word I'm looking for? If we transgress the law, there is a penalty that is enforced. And in the same way, our boundaries, the boundaries of our lives need to be laws where there are penalties when those boundaries are crossed. Amen. So if I set boundaries in my life with another brother and they cross those boundaries, there has to be some kind of penalty that is given so that it doesn't continue to happen. Because if we don't set ourselves up with boundaries and we don't enforce those boundaries, those boundaries are going to continue to get stomped on. It says the testimony of the Lord is sure. A testimony is a formal statement, written and or verbal. We have to understand that with our boundaries, we have to testify to them. We have to communicate those boundaries. We can't expect other people just to know what our boundaries are. Again, contextually, this is talking about the Lord, but I'm using this for a point. It says the precepts of the Lord are right. So a precept is a general rule that regulates behavior. There has to be rules in my life that regulate not only my behavior, but the behavior of those around me. I have to establish boundaries. I have to establish laws. I have to verbalize those laws. And I have to have these precepts, these rules that regulate the behavior. It says that the commandment of the Lord is pure. Commandments are a divine rule that are to be observed strictly. There's some things, there are some rules that are going to be observed in my life that are, I don't want to say religious, but they're sacred. 
right? There's a difference between you crossing a boundary of like um, a, a spatial, a proximity boundary. My boundary is you can't get that close to me when you're speaking. And so that there's going to be some wiggle room with the penalty. I'm probably going to back up. I might be like, hey, bro, like give me some space. That's a different law or precept as opposed to like, don't sleep with my wife. That's a commandment. That's a line that will not be crossed. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room on that boundary in my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So some boundaries are sacred. Some boundaries hold more value or more weight and are not to even come close to. That was a dark, dark uh, uh, analogy. Some of you, I got your attention like, wait, hold on a second. But that's, I'm, I'm trying to use that for, for uh, the, this, the point here. It says that the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Fear. There were actually two words that they use for fear in the Bible. and In Hebrew, uh, there's fir, F-I-R, which means fright, dismay, or terror. But many times when they're talking about the fear of the Lord, they use a completely different word, which is yaira, Y-I-R-A-H. I think that's how you say it, yara. Yara is another word for fear or awe. And that is more like a respect, reverence, love, or admiration. There is a respect and an admiration. There is a love when it comes to fearing the Lord. It's not as much um, of this trembling. Now, don't get me wrong. There's fear and trembling. But if fear and trembling were always together, they wouldn't have to differentiate that. So when they say you have to love the Lord your God or, or you have to have the fear of the Lord or approach him with fear and trembling, usually the fear, the trembling covers that part. The fear is usually this awe, it's this love, this respect, this reverence, this holy honor that you have for God. And so in the same way, our boundaries should be done out of this sense of love and respect and reverence. When we create boundaries in our lives with this sense of respect and reverence, they're there in order to keep order in our relationships. The last thing that they talk about is rules. He says the rule, the rules of the Lord are true. And so rules are defined as this. It's a set of explicit or understood regulations that govern conduct. It's a lot of definitions, but rules are put in place in order to govern con conduct. But the thing that they says, it's a set of explicit or understood regulations. Explicit means that it's stated clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. The problem with a lot of the boundaries that you have in your guys' lives, the areas where you're getting walked on, you're getting used, you're getting abused, the, the place where there's a lot of conflict and, and the areas in your life is because you have not communicated in detail and solidified what your boundaries are. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, like I said, we need to create these healthy boundaries to protect our space, our mental health, our creativity, our energy, and our output. I want you guys to know right now that it's okay to say no, and it's okay to say not right now. I believe that as Christians, we get this mindset that... Um, we need to serve everybody's need. And, and this isn't wrong. Uh, we need to put other people first. We need to do what's best for the greater good of the body. But I want you to understand that there are people out there who will take full advantage of your kindness. They'll take advantage of the fact that you follow Jesus and they will use you. They will bleed you dry until you have nothing left to give. And so it's okay. I want you guys to understand that there's something holy, there's something beautiful about the power of saying no and saying not yet. Not every opportunity is from God. And if we allow ourselves, if we don't have solid boundaries, if we don't carve out time for ourselves to fill our own cups, we're going to find ourselves burnt out. We're going to find ourselves short-sighted. We're going to find ourselves exhausted. And we're going to wonder why we have no joy no peace, no comfort. And it's because we haven't established clear boundaries. We haven't communicated them and we're not protecting them. We're allowing people to trample all over us and to get closer than they, than they need to in certain points. So resentment, frustration, conflict, a lot of these things arise in your life when the boundaries aren't clear, when you do not have a clear set of boundaries. Communication isn't clear and when communication isn't clear, and one of the people's boundaries are being infringed upon, that's where there becomes an issue. And this is for my married people. This could be people in a workplace. 
when you are expecting somebody to do something or they're crossing a boundary, but it hasn't been clearly communicated, it creates this friction. It creates this issue. And those are things, that's why it's important to establish a clear set of rules, regulations, and the way that you operate. One of the other things that you have to know yourself, you have to know how you tick. Not everybody, my boundaries aren't going to be the same boundaries as Scott's. My boundaries aren't going to be the same as Christian's or Gonzo or Brother Bob or Brother Tony. They're not going to be the same. What I allow and what Brother DeAndre allows is going to be different. So it's important for us to know ourselves and also to know your personnel, know the people that you're around, know your wife's boundaries, know your friend's boundaries, know your coworkers' boundaries. And we establish this through open, honest, transparent communication clearly stating. I think that too often we don't state or establish our boundaries because sometimes we want to be liked, we want to be accepted, we want to be received well, and sometimes our boundaries might collide with other people's boundaries and so we don't establish them. And at the end of the day, the only person who ends up getting hurt is you because you haven't established what it is that you need, what it is or how you operate. You're not really being true to yourself. Now, I want to say that there is a place for selflessness. There's a place for sacrifice. There's a place um, for putting others first. There's a, a place to allow people to cross those boundaries, right? My boundary might be, hey, you don't call me after eight o'clock. And um, in, in that instance, if there's an emergency, obviously that's my boundary, but I'm going to lower the boundary because I need to serve and help somebody. So if it's an emergency, obviously that boundary's, you know, it, it's put away or, you know, whatever that is that you establish, there's, there's a time for selflessness, there's a time, but you have to identify and have discernment on when those boundaries are being crossed um, and when it's something that is cyclical, like I... Uh, people will infringe on your boundaries if you let them. So that's the thing. Every now and again, it's okay to be selfless, to serve, to step out, to, to lay your, your, your personal needs aside, but we can't pour out of an empty cup. So you have to ask yourself these questions. Is this something that somebody's doing habitually? Are they doing this continually? Are they crossing the line after the boundaries have been established? Um, is it cyclical? Is this something that keeps coming around? In those cases, you have to be a little bit more rigid with your boundaries. There's less flexibility, but you have to protect yourself. I want to remind you guys that even Jesus had boundaries. Uh, many times it said that he would sneak off and get alone with God. In, in the mornings, he would get alone and he would have his quiet time. I believe that he would say no to things without having to say no. There would be times when he was done, when he had enough, when he was no longer going to serve, when he was going to retreat, when he was gonna go spend time with the Father. And in the same way, it's important that we establish those same boundaries and we take time to get alone and to spend time with God and to fill our own cups because we are just a, a shell of who we can possibly be when we're reliant on our own strength when we're relying on our own talents, when we're relying on our own gifts. And I believe that many of us, are we, we get to this place where we start to operate out of that. We operate out of our, our speech or, you know, many of us are good talkers or we know how to, you know, manipulate or twist things. And it's not coming from like an evil or dark place. It's just that that is our natural propensity as fallen human beings is to rely on our own giftings and to rely on our own strengths and talents. And what we often do is... We'll burn ourselves out. We will no longer rely on God. And then we're on autopilot, striving, working, shifting, positioning ourselves, trying to make things work. So I want to remind you guys that boundaries are for protection, right? I established that boundaries are for protection. Healthy boundaries, they protect your relationships. They protect your finances. They protect your family. When you have a healthy set of boundaries, again, and, and I establish laws that are verbalized, that, um, that there's a penalty for people to cross over. You, there's this, this idea that when you're a Christian, when you're a follower of Jesus, that you're, you're a punching bag and that you have to sit there and just take it. You got to turn the other cheek and you got to stand there and you just got to get gut punched. And, and I don't think... I don't think that that was the message. I don't think that was the context of the scripture of turn the other cheek. I don't think that Jesus just wants us to, to sit there and be a spiritual punching bag. There comes a time when you have to 
flip a table over. There comes a time when you've got to rebuke a Pharisee. There's, there comes a time when you have to make a stand and realize that, okay, now this isn't for the glory of God right now. I'm just being abused. And, and a lot of people get themselves or find themselves in these positions, not saying anything because they think it's the Christian thing to do. But sometimes the Christian thing to do is to call something out, to call it what it is, to draw a boundary. Sometimes the, the Christian thing to do is to cut somebody off or to deny access any longer. One of my favorite shows was, uh, it was Intervention. I don't know if you guys ever watched Intervention, but um, you know, I grew up with drug addict family and, and whatnot. And so I'd watch intervention. And one of the things that was hard for people to do was to cut their family members off. Um, but at the end of the day, they were enabling the, the, the issue. They were enabling the addict in their addiction. So, well, I don't want to put them out. I don't want to push them away. I don't want to not give them a place to stay because then they're going to stay on the streets. And so the mom or dad would let the kid come in and they would make them, they would give them drugs and drug money and they would enable the addiction. And they were never forced into the situation that would probably eventually change them because they were fearful. They blamed themselves or they thought that maybe the, them pushing them away would kill them. That's not their issue. And enabling is only making the issue worse. And in the same way, many of us are enabling abusive relationships. And this doesn't mean even like in your, your, your spouse, but like in friend groups, in workplaces, because you're not setting boundaries or establishing limits and like a place uh, to where people can go, you are enabling people to walk on you. You're, you're giving them the permission to treat you poorly. You're giving them permission to, you know, essentially walk all over you. And so it's important that we create these boundaries. Um, boundaries are established in and through God's word, right? That's where our boundaries should stem from. That's where they should come from. And they should be combined with an understanding of yourself. You have to know yourself, right? So my boundaries are going to have more space in between them and myself than would uh, Brother Jonathan so our, or, or, or Brother Denny. So where my boundaries are, they're established through the word of God and then combined with knowing who I am. And it's important that we do that for ourselves. It's not only knowing yourself, but it's also your preferences and also the direction that your life is heading. Um, I wanna, want you guys to know that boundaries can move. Boundaries aren't something that, like biblical boundaries, they don't move. But as far as my personal boundaries, they might shift, they might change depending on the season that I'm in, depending on the relationship. You guys might know what I'm talking about. You might have a bro who... You know, you guys hug, dap up, and you know, you get real close. That your guys' boundaries, there's almost none. Like some, you know, who who was it? There was uh, uh, <laughs> Christian and Patrick. They had a bromance going on. So their boundaries, they might not have had a whole lot of boundaries. People were like, "Hey, Pastor Andrew, are Christian and Patrick dating?" And I'm like, "No. What are you talking about?" It's like, "Well, they got a bromance going on. They had like they had zero boundaries. Like it was that." Now, it might be different between Christian and Brother Scott. He might dap him up from a distance instead of bringing it in. You don't know. But your boundaries really depend on the person, the situation, and they do move. The more comfortable you get, the closer you allow people into your life. So just understand that boundaries are fluid and they change over time. Different seasons of life require different boundaries. Um, I'll share when I first got on social media, uh, I would answer every DM, right? I had like 10,000 followers. Anybody would message me, I'm just like, yeah, man, let me pray for you. Here's my personal phone number. Like, let's be best friends. I love social media. Well, I'll tell you this, man, at 300,000 almost followers, I can't have that same access because I've got people like, Brother Andrew, I stubbed my toe, pray for me. Andrew, I need your prayer. Like, you know, donate to our orphanage. It's, it's wild. So I had to create a boundary as the season and as life changed based on the circumstances. I no longer can just let everybody in and be handing my phone number out like candy on Halloween. Like, um, not a good look because now I'm getting weird random phone calls from somebody I gave my phone number to two years ago when I had 10,000 followers. And they're, you know, asking me some weird stuff. So protect yourselves. I got to change my number, by the way, as well. Um, I'll make sure if you got it, you guys will get it. But uh, the other thing is, it's your responsibility. I want to be very clear. And this, I think, will save us a lot of problems and issues. It's your responsibility to let other people know what your personal boundaries are. You can't expect other, people's to, other people to know what your boundaries are. You know what I mean? 
You can't, you can't think, and this is where, this is where I think a lot of relationships, they, they start to butt heads, is you think your wife knows how you want to be treated, talked to, you know those limits, and um, it's of the utmost importance that you verbalize them. As they change, as they grow, as they mature, because they are fluid, you, it's your job to communicate that with the people in your life and who you care about. You can't expect other people to read your mind. You can't expect other people to know where you're at. And again, your boundaries can change based on your circumstance and situation. My boundary, I might be more open and more loving and fun having and having a good time if everything is going well. But if I just get into an argument with my wife in the car and then I jump in and you know I'm talking to my boy and he's like, what's up, dude? And I'm just like, shut up. My boundaries change. I can't be like that. And you guys know what I'm talking about because you guys have been there, right? Is based on what you're going through, you might be in a joking, loving mood and having fun and then you might go through something and then the very next day you're not the same. It's our job. It's not other people's fault. It's our job to verbalize what it is that we're going through, our expectations, what we need. I believe that it will solve a lot of conflict that we find ourselves running into. And we have to have grace when it comes to setting and establishing boundaries. We have to have grace with people. Everybody operates in a different manner. You can't assume that everybody's boundaries are the same. I think that this, this message is really, I found myself today bending and doing something that I don't really like to do. And um, I, I was praying about it and God was like, you gotta set boundaries, you have boundaries. So I'm, I'm working with this app and you know, they cold called me first off, you guys know I don't really like that, but they hit me up and like, hey, you know, we need you to have these two videos by tomorrow done. And I was just like, ew, no, first off, nobody's my boss. You ain't going to just, you know, you ain't going to just call me and tell me what you need. Second, I only do content. I only create content on Thursdays and Fridays. Like I've created a schedule where anything you see me post, I probably created it last week. I'm not doing stuff real time anymore because of my capacity and I'm prioritizing rest. So the fact that somebody did that and I didn't like it and I found myself bowing going, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll get that done, get that done and then hang up. And then I thought about it. I was like, that's so out of my character. That's not something that I want to do. I have boundaries and I need to clarify. I need to set those boundaries with these individuals so that they know what to expect. It's not their fault. I can't be offended that they would call and ask me to do something if they don't know. So I had to call back and go, hey, look, ain't gonna happen tomorrow. The best I can do is get it to you Thursday because that's when I create content. I had to verbalize. I had to stand up for myself and reestablish my boundaries or else I was gonna walk away. I had already felt it. I felt myself being resentful. I wasn't looking forward to the project. I was. I, I just got kind of a, a bad taste in my mouth and it wasn't their fault. It wasn't their issue. That was on me. And so as I was praying through it, God was revealing to me, hey, how many other people in here um, are having conflict, are having issues, um, are navigating areas in their life because they might have boundaries. People are crossing them, but the people don't even know. People are crossing imaginary boundaries and lines that you've never established, that you've never verbalized, that you've never told anybody about. Like, you know, that it's like when you're dating somebody, I've had a, I, I've, make sure I'm not yelling this super loud. I've been in a relationship where I can say something to one girl and then you get into the next relationship and you say something and she's like, what, why would you ever say that? And I'm like, oh snap, I didn't know that was your boundary. I'm learning as I'm going. And it's the same, uh, that, it's the same thing that we're all dealing with on a daily basis. So I said all of that to say this, guys, boundaries are for protection. Um, within those boundaries, I believe there's provision. I believe there's creativity. I believe there's rest. I believe there is joy. I think that there, I know that there's a peace, there's a comfort, and these are all boundaries that are established by God. These are boundaries that are established between you and God, and it's your job. It's your mission to establish that with other people. And if you do so, I believe that you'll see an increase in the satisfaction in your relationships, not just marital or, or opposite sex relationships, but in your relationships in your workplace, with your friend groups, with your family members, in your church, when you start to set up boundaries uh, for yourself to adhere to. So that's all I got. Short little message, you're like 30 minutes, not short at all, but that is.